everyone and welcome to Thermal Control Magazine's interactive session on cold chain business prospects. From the time COVID cases were reported, its devastating impact led to the challenges of protecting, transporting and safely storing temperature sensitive goods worldwide. The cold chain logistics management process deals in storing and delivering products at specific refrigerated temperatures. The required temperature instability would make the product unusable, resulting in its waste value. The transportation of temperature sensitive materials relies on the thermal and refrigerated packaging methods and logistical planning to protect the value of shipment. Global cold chain logistic market is projected to reach $585 million by 2026 at CAGR of 17.9% from 2019 to 2026. Cold chain begin with storage facilities at manufacturer's place, packaging to prevent spoilage, inventory monitoring include temperatures, humidity level and other factors that can affect the product to be delivered by land, air, rail or sea route. However, the container should be equipped to maintain temperature requirement ensuring safe product handling as it reaches the doorstep of the end user. On this note, today, we have come together to witness an engaging interactive session on Cold Chain Business Prospects 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and privilege for me to introduce you to today's distinguished speakers, Mr. R. Anish Simha, Senior General Manager, Renac India Limited, Mr. Pankaj Mehta, Managing Director, Carrier Transicold India, Mr. Jonathan Gomez, Assistant Manager Marketing, Crystal Group, Mr. Rajat Gupta, Founder and Director at Tesol and Mr. Ankit Janwar, Vice President, Ms. Plus Te Advanced Technologies. There were good opportunities and investment potential prevailing in cold chain in India. That's why. Right. So, what new trends can we expect for the uninterrupted chain supply transport to destination? As pandemic has also become a trend, or is relay trucking is feasible in the long future? Mr. Pankaj, what are your views about this? So, you know, you brought up a very interesting point, especially in view of the pandemic and the importance we've seen of the cold chain. I think uh, for India, cold chain is uh, very successful in many areas. Vaccination is one of them. I mean, even before the pandemic, we were running one of the world's largest immunization program, you know, for children and pregnant women. So, with a very effective uh, cold chain network uh, going down to village level and using many of the solutions that, uh, you know, Ankit and uh, Rajat mentioned, you know, uh, the last mile person who was going to inoculate was carrying them in small thermocol or uh, insulated, uh, you know, carry bags. So, I think the chain is effective. Uh, uh, we, we also have a very thriving, uh, you know, dairy sector which uh, and ice cream consumption, I think it's totally dependent on a very effective cold chain. So there are several examples of a viable and a profitable cold chain in India. Opportunities, definitely we see opportunities in many areas and also the cold chain of the future. I think that is what we need to keep an eye on. What is the next, uh, you know, level of cold chain, sustainability, connected, you know, data transparency, how energy efficient it can become, how more green it can become. I think those are areas that, uh, you know, uh, need to be looked at. Thanks. The penetration for cold chain is still not so very uh, encouraging in India. How do you look at it, Mr. Ankit? Well, if you look at the NCCD data, they show a huge gap in the number of trucks required and the number of trucks which is uh, available in the market. Uh, the penetration uh, is dependent a lot on, um, I would say, uh, investments coming in from not only from the private entities, but also from the government bodies and the right policies. Uh, I think the uh, in, emphasis from the government on, uh, you know, promoting the cold chain infrastructure is still not adequate. Uh, they need to do more in terms of policies and investing in the right cold chain infrastructure so uh, so addressing the gap cannot only be through through the fmcg companies or or through the big private players it has also it also needs to come from the government uh, it can be through public private partnerships so i i personally feel this has to this will be a big uh, role 
uh, this will be a big factor going forward uh, wherein uh, the government and the private sector both need to do significant investments to address the current gap in the indian cold chain uh, industry definitely encouragement definitely matters and you rightly address about the infrastructure aspect of cold chain so my question is to mr anish is what kind of uh, growth you see for say uh, temperature controlled vans temperature controlled uh, containers in present indian market the uh, temperature controlled uh, containers are uh, really going to grow and uh, we as i said uh, uh, as i uh, we were discussing earlier a uh, pre cooler uh, technology has to be more spread across and uh, then you have the cold chain starting from there where actually it requires temperature controlled vehicles in addition to that then we we do have temperature monitoring um, of the produce right from the time it is processed till it reaches the end user temperature of the product is being monitored then we were also discussing with other panelists where uh, they were mentioning that the <clears throat> more emphasis is being given on the uh, last mile delivery uh, however i would like also to uh, share that maintaining the temperature of already brought uh, a product which has already been brought to its storage temperature is easier than bringing down the temperature of the product initially so uh, we should also concentrate there to produce energy and uh, i'm sure uh, uh, the losses what we discussed were basically for fruits and vegetables which is what is being talked and for chocolates and ice cream it's totally another industry and we cannot mention on losses about that because this losses what we see is for fruits and vegetables so i think there was some communication uh, misunderstanding there but overall uh, both ways the industry has to work um, you require larger cold stores and uh, uh, te- technologies to bring down the temperatures in an energy efficient manner and it has also to be monitored uh, is what i feel and that is what the government is aiming and that we will see that see already it's been there that frozen is fresher than fresh so i don't know how you people would like to take it but then that's one of the jargon in which people are selling and all this last mile delivery is what we have seen is also selling frozen product like ice cream or any other processed food yeah so both ways the it grows yeah, so yeah and we just concentrate on the you energy see, you see great process. potential in growth yes yeah. sure absolutely yeah and also you know as you said uh, agro products are the you know least tapped potential i mean probably that is a, a great future ahead uh, mr jachar the uh, earlier also in our discussions we addressed this it's about like while using this kind of technologies how it end up adding more cost to the end consumers because we are talking about encouraging culture and encouragement of culture definitely comes up with probably either value addition or by you know uh consumers get the products at a more affordable cost how do you see this can be defined uh you know in present uh, regulations see um as a consumer if you get a and and in today's uh, in today's uh, post covid uh, world i think people people are differentiating between uh, good and not so good products and uh, if you find a source which is reliable hygienic uh, properly managed uh, temperature controlled uh, quality uh, sort of uh, you know which 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 also uh, appeals to you as as a quality product you're willing to pay a bit of a premium on it right so there are two ways in which you can gain as a uh, as a brand which is a getting a bit of a premium on your on your product compared to what others are selling it for and second is getting a wider reach larger market share because you'll anyways be spending money on marketing for that right so instead of that you're spending a little bit on your product in order to ensure that there is a longer term brand recall like in today's if you, if you look a very simple example of the poultry industry the the numbers from unorganized to organized have changed players who were one of the largest poultry processors have not been able to become the front end brands but the front end brands have become uh, much bigger 
some of these front end brand, brands are doing about 100 crores a month kind of a revenue which these companies have not even thought building plants is not the solution right it's the way that they've been able to deliver and they have invested in cold chain infrastructure so my limited point is that if you do a lot of effort in making your product well storing it well but you don't deliver it in the right way to the customer he's not willing to pay for it because he doesn't know what you've done earlier right he doesn't how do i know whether you've actually you know stored it pre-cooled it how it is packed how it is delivered to me is what matters to me and th that's my impression so i'm not saying that the that the uh, you know the the whole sort of chain behind is of no value it is definitely a value because you will not get the kind of product that you will get till the end but the if if the last mile connect is not there then a lot of the effort which is put falls only in the cost saving uh, bracket it does not fall into additional revenue generation for you as a brand and that's where i think people are trying to understand if you look at even the e-commerce players the kind of packaging that they're doing on top of their product that is cost but that that packaging is what is differentiating them from one one player to the other because there are five players who are delivering in 10 minutes <laughs> which one do you buy from so so that's so that's that's my that's my only limited point here Absolutely. you know as a brand you need to think in in, in that direction Surely, thank you, uh, Mr. Jonathan. In your presentation, you were mentioned you were mentioning one point about the regulatory constraints. Can you elaborate it a little bit? All right, uh, I'll give it with an example. Now, if you look at Australia, Australia has stringent rules and regulations. I think everyone here has had some dealings with them, and they actually even reward the clients, the international clients, if they are able to stick to their rules and regulations. Take for example, an egg. They have a barcoding system that is printed on the egg that can actually be scanned by anyone across the world that will tell you from which farm and which chicken it actually was brought in. The exact process from the minute it was ready at the farm to in your hand once you pay for it. And that is where regulation is highly important. I believe that when we, the entire world can come with one solution that is properly available in enough data that is required to make an informed decision, then customers, like for example, the last mile delivery, they will be able to understand why they are paying for the product at whatever price. And if the cold chain can actually help reduce the wastage that can actually be curved through all of these regulations then we can deliver products or the companies can deliver products at a much cheaper rate because one of the biggest issues that everyone has is we are spending on things that are not giving us direct roi so that is why i feel a proper regulation is required the new technology the new rfids barcode scanners the digital doors the access that you give the remote monitoring, the access, the control, everything actually is data. Data that can actually give you an insight into where exactly are your problems. Now let's fix it. And that yes. starts with regulation. Yes, and I'm sure that Mr. Kunal Jain just posted and his views, you know, must be taken with in validation with your feedback. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Ankit, uh, I'm coming to, a, uh, your, uh, to you with a point that uh, we all talk about PCM can make an important contribution to an uninterrupted call chain. How do you see the future of the same? I would say how quickly everybody adopts it. Um, I'm still requesting Mr. Pankaj to bring the Vatna series from Europe to here. Uh, he hasn't brought it yet. So uh, I guess, uh, and I still want Renak to spend more on marketing uh, the trucks which they have developed. And uh, I would pref I would want uh, the modelers and the HUS to be more open to trying the technology and not just rejecting it. Uh, the regular, frankly speaking, the regular purchase managers just don't get it. And the top management don't have the time to try it. So uh, it, it all boils down to collectively uh, investing in the technology, believing in it. It has been uh, and frankly, it has been proven. Rajat knows it very well. Uh, it's uh, Renax team also knows it very well. It's been proven across the world. It's it's not something you're doing out of the blue. Uh, any technology takes time. You have to give it some time. And 
I think the inflection point in the in the pharmaceutical space has already come in, and you're seeing a lot of adoption in PCM-based uh, products in the pharmaceutical space. Uh, however, in the food space, uh, especially the trucks and the last mile delivery, we are, uh, I guess, we are all struggling, and uh, especially because the margins are lower there. So, uh, but uh, it sh- the inflection point there should also come in in the next one or two. But it will all be through a collective effort. Like I made some humble requests with, to everybody in the panel here. So I am coming to Mr. Pankaj. Mr. Pankaj, uh, I want you to, you know, uh, give a response to his request as well as a closing statement for this session. I, I, I think one important factor to be kept in mind is where is the business case? I mean, see, business opportunities can be sensed by the industry very clearly. and where the business case is existing supply chain you know logistics everything falls in place you know and like as i said there are several examples of successful usage of cold chain where there is a business case and the business makes profits so it's a it's a question of the industry seeing the business case and uh, i think uh, you know also to the point of consumers realizing value of cold chain i think it's at the end of it it's a shelf life that you provide a customer who sees a product you know coming to him where he can still consume it over 2 3 days he would rather prefer that than a product which he buys and you know it within a couple of hours he has to throw it away because the shelf life is already expired during the journey so i think it's it's at both ends in the industry side it has to be the business case and the consumer is ready to pay certainly for a product that you know he sees better value thanks Before wrapping up today's session, we would like to thank our distinguished panelists, Mr. Jonathan, Mr. Ankit, Mr. Pankaj, and Mr. Rajat, and Mr. R. Anish. I'd also like to thank Mr. Gopal Anand and Mr. Prasad Nair for taking this initiative. We'd like our delegates and viewers to stay connected with us on our social media handles. Thermal Control Magazine is available on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Additionally, you can also download our app from Google Play and App Store. So with this we would like to announce the closing of today's session request you to stay tuned for more such sessions thank you and goodbye